let's take a look now at the pathway that lymph will take ultimately to get back into the circulatory system. Remember that the lymphatic system's primary job is to bring fluids back into that circulatory system. It goes from the lymphatic capillaries to the lymphatic vessels to the lymph nodes to the lymphatic vessels. These are again vessels that are tying from one end to the other end. The lymphatic trunk, collecting ducts, and the subclavian vein. So let's take a look first at the lymphatic capillaries. If you recall from the cardiovascular system, we took a look at blood capillaries. And the whole magic behind blood capillaries was that they were thin enough to allow things into and out of those vessels. The same thing can be said here. What we have here is we have beginnings of these tubes that go back to the subclavian vein that are even more permeable. They allow even more stuff in. So they kind of soak up the surrounding fluids from the tissue. We have microscopic tubes that are found within the interstitial space. They are not found within the central nervous system, cartilage, the cornea, bones, and bone marrow. The walls are like the blood capillaries. They're made of a single layer of endothelial cells. We have special lymph capillaries in the small intestine that will absorb digestive fats. So let's take a look at the lymphatic vessels. So we have the capillaries. The capillaries will then turn and feed into larger vessels. The lymphatic vessels are very similar to the veins. They have three layers. They have the tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica adventitia. We also find, and this is important when we start talking about the flow of lymph in our next video, the vessels have valves in them. The valves are going to prevent backflow of the lymph. We want the lymph to go one way towards the subclavian. So the valves prevent the lymph from being pushed back. Lymph nodes, lymphatic nodes, these are going to vary in size and shape. We're going to have a separate video just on the lymph nodes. They are typically bean shaped and they will filter lymph for microorganisms, infected cells and other things that do not belong in that lymph. So then it goes back into lymphatic vessels and it ultimately will kind of merge into something bigger called lymphatic trunks. Lymphatic vessels drain into these trunks. Trunks are going to be named for the area of the body they serve, so the region they serve. We have things called lumbar trunks, the intestinal trunks, intercostal, bronchomedial stinal trunks, the subclavian, and the jugular. The collecting ducts. So now we've gone from lymphatic trunks to collecting ducts. These are even going to be bigger. So you can almost think of a small kind of creek a water creek, maybe it might be dry sometimes, might be, have a little water, and the creeks f kind of feed into a more of a, a smaller river, and the river fills into bigger rivers, and ultimately you get a big collection of water moving in. This is how we can also think of how the lymph flows. So now we're looking at the bigger rivers. We're looking at the collecting ducts. Lymphatic trunks drain into one of two collecting ducts. So there's only two collecting ducts. We have the thoracic duct and we have the right lymphatic duct. Most of the lymph from the lower parts of the body will flow up the thoracic duct and empty into the venous system at the junction of the left interior jugular vein and subclavian vein. Taking a look at this picture, we can identify where these collecting ducts are located at. So we can see the thoracic duct and we can see the right lymphatic duct. Lymph from the left side of the head, left arm, parts of the chest are going to enter the thoracic duct. Lymph from the right side of the neck, the head, the right arm, parts of the thoracic will enter the right lymphatic, lymphatic duct. They enter the venous system at the junction of the right subclavian vein and internal jugular veins. So the thoracic duct in a little bit more detail. The thoracic duct is the longer and the larger of the two. It's going to serve more parts of the body. It's going to start in the abdomen. Remember, everything's feeding into this from the lower parts of the body. So it's going to start with this huge river going back up to the subclavian in the abdominal area. It's going to pass up through the diaphragm next to the aorta. 
it comes up anteriorly to the vertebral column and it's going to empty into the left subclavian. It's going to drain from the following trunks. It's going to drain from the intestinal, the lumbar, the intercostal, the left subclavian, the left jugular, and the left bronchomedial spinal. So this is coming and getting a lot of stuff from a lot of parts of the body. Now the right lymphatic duct also is a big river but not as big as the other one. So this is not going to drain as much of the body. This starts at the right thoracic area at the merger of the right jugular, right subclavian, and right bronchomedial trunk, medial spinal trunk. It receives drainage from the right arm, the right side of the thorax, and the right side of the head. It's going to empty into the right subclavian vein. On your exam, be aware of who drains where and where it ultimately ends up, and these are good test questions. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look at how lymph actually moves.